on the 8th day of October, Halloween gave to me 8 Vampire Cruises, 7 Silent Heroes, 6 Prequel Bloodstones, 5 Diabolical Fledglings, 4 Vampire Pianists, 3 Dead Professors, 2 Michelle Actresses, and a Radu drooling something bloody. <laughs> Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the eighth day, the beginning of the second week of our 31 days of Halloween. And uh, this is another of our one-offs. Today we are doing the last voyage of the Demeter, which uh, is apparently how you pronounce the name of the ship from Dracula. So I was skeptical going into this movie because of it being a movie about, you know, four pages of the book Dracula. And I was unsure how do you make this a movie and especially because if you have seen the trailer for this movie then you know that the vampire in question is not you know dracular uh he is not not like a suave sophisticated gary oldman vampire it is this gross like bat creature uh running around this ship and uh spoilers if you haven't seen the trailer for last voyage of the demeter because it's a gross bad looking creature running around a ship um that being said so i was skeptical going in and uh then i realized like oh this is directed by andre overdahl i am probably horribly mispronouncing that name but he's the guy who uh directed troll hunter and uh the autopsy of jane doe and did that scary stories to tell in the dark uh movie as well like he's a good horror director and this is him doing a pretty big budget swing at this kind of movie uh, you know kind of a, a a close quarters vampire movie and so one thing i do like there there is an alien quality by which i mean the the movie alien with last voyage of the demeter because what it is, it's a bunch of people that are doing a routine job like, hey, I am getting on this boat to deliver uh, crates from Romania back to London. Uh, if we get there at a certain amount of time, we get a bonus. You know, again, very alien. And, oh, by the way, there's something on board that we can't get away from. So that is the setup. And it starts great. It, it starts with loading the ship and you get uh, the main character, a guy named Clements, uh, as played by Corey Hawkins, who's fantastic in this movie. And Liam Cunningham from Game of Thrones is the captain of the ship. You've got uh, David Des Desmalchin as Wojcik, who is also fantastic in this movie. And a, a pretty good selection of characters you know they're all kind of the same you know they're seafaring hard-working blue-collar dudes the like the uh, the the chef on the ship or cook let's face it he's not you know uh doing gordon ramsay shit on their plates uh but the the guy who's cooking all their food is super religious and that's kind of his thing and there is the captain's grandson who's bouncing around. And then, of course, they find Anna, as played by Aisling Franciosi, uh, who they find in a coffin in dirt. And that that can't be good, right? She's also, by the way, she played Lyanna Stark you know, on Game of Thrones for a, a couple of episodes. So there you go. She was also in The Nightingale. And, um, you know, I, I think she was the daughter in uh, The Unforgivable, that Netflix uh, uh, movie with uh, Sandra Bullock. So, at any rate, she's good in this as well. Everybody's good in it. Like, all, the, all the cast is great. And the, um, you know, they load up the ship. Clements comes on. Uh, he is a doctor uh, who is a, a black man in the, you know, 1800s. And is like, yeah, I came to Romania. 
Uh, and and there's some question as to why he's trying to get back to London now, even though he says he is a Cambridge-educated doctor. And so there's a little bit of mystery surrounding that. And when you get the payoff to it, it's pretty nice. He's, you know, uh, basically is is telling uh, of an, a too familiar story about why he has to go back at any rate. And uh, so then, you know, Anna comes out of this coffin and is, needs a blood transfusion and has all these marks on her body and is kind of comatose that they don't know what's going on. And then members of the crew start disappearing and uh, or are found dead and murdered. And like at first, like their livestock that they keep on the ship uh, are eaten <laughs> and, 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 you know, their throats torn out. And, you know, there are some factions on the ship that immediately are like, we've got a woman on board. That's bad luck. That's why this is happening to us. And then you've got Clements, who's a man of reason, who keeps telling them like, no, 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 that's not what's going on here. There, there's an answer to this. There's something logical. And so that's kind of his arc through the story is learning that there are, you know, more things on heaven and earth Horatio than are dreamt of in your philosophies. And uh, so that's all all done reasonably well. There's not a lot of plot uh, in terms of you know machinations of the story because it, it 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 like I said, it's the same plot as Alien, right? Like it's a bunch of people on a ship, people start dying. We got to figure out what this thing is, and we got to figure out how to kill it. And of course, if you've read Drackler, you know that there is no way that they're going to kill Drackler at the end of this story. So then the question is really. Well, who survives, if anybody? And, you know, if, again, if you remember your Drackler, at the end of this, they find the ship uh, washed ashore in, in jolly old England with the captain lashed to the uh, the wheel. And so you get a couple of things from the journal uh, from Drac Drackler uh, <laughs> placed in this story uh, that Liam Cunningham reads aloud. As he, he kind of narrates the movie, even though it's more a little bit of voiceover here and there. It's not proper narration. And and that's it. That's the movie. And then the question is, well, does all of that work then? And the answer is yes. Yes, this all works surprisingly well. I went into this with pretty low expectations because it's such a weird conceit. Or, or seems like such a limiting conceit. Right, that the idea that hey, I can't, I can't go beyond the scope of of Drackler. Like I, I know how this begins, and I know how the ship ends, and I, what I don't know is the stuff that happens in the middle, and is the stuff that happens in the middle interesting enough to keep things moving, to to keep my interest for almost two hours because it's a, uh, not quite a two hour movie, but it's closer than not, right? Like it's it's about an hour fifty of actual runtime, and that ain't nothing. So that's where I started with it. And then you see like the, the vistas of this port town as things are getting loaded on the ship. It's like, oh, they spent some money on this thing. This looks good. It's a, it's a good looking movie. That was the first thing I was struck by. Then I was struck by like, oh, these characters are actually interesting. And I like most of these people on the ship. Like there's one guy that's a real shithead and I was happy to see him get it. But most of them are pretty decent people, and there's one one guy in particular who is uh, sort of the, the guy who befriends Clements on the ship that I really like. He's a really, not only a good actor, but the character is really good. He's kind of stoic, but wise. You know, he's, kinda, he's sort of the older seaman who takes Clements under his wing uh, a bit, and I really like that character a lot. The kid is surprisingly not terrible. Most kid actors and, and uh, kid performances are just the living worst, and he's fine. And so all that is good. Uh, and then once you're on the ship and weird stuff starts happening, it's good. Like, Andre over it all knows how to construct a good tense scene, and that's what he's doing, is creating sort of these set pieces. And the set pieces all pretty much work. There, some of them are better than others. There, there are some good ones, and then there are some that are like, okay, yeah, I see what we're doing. This is just, hey, somebody over there, and then, oh, look, it's behind me. And, and that's fine. Some of that works pretty well. There is, however, uh, a couple of moments where, you know, because it's Drackler, other people are becoming infected with this 
Dracler curse, the the curse of vampirism. And one in particular, both when it happens, it's it's effective. Like all the stuff is pretty good. But there is one in particular that is genuinely not necessarily shocking, but when it happens, it's like, oh, that is unpleasant. And and the the fate of one of the crew is particularly bad. I don't want to spoil it more than that, uh, although I'm saying this with a big grin on my face because I'm like, man, it was mean-spirited. It was the kind of thing that, if you know, left to my druthers, the kind of stuff I would do in a movie, and I've got a really bad attitude about an audience where I want the audience to suffer and squirm a little bit. And this is definitely a moment where Overdahl is making the audience suffer and squirm a little bit. And it's great. I loved it. And you <laughs> you get, of course, to this final, like, hey, we're closing in on England. There's a few of us left, and we've got to stop this thing. It's, it's the idea of, like, we can't let this thing reach Earth. You know, like, again, it's very alien. It's just alien with a, a weird bat vampire on a ship instead of a spaceship with a monster. But it's it's taking pages out of that book because it's a, it's a confined space and how do you how do you you know ring horror from that and Overdahl's really good about it and, and when you get to the climax the climax is satisfying the climax is pretty good there's a a great moment where uh Drackler kind of conjures up a mist and seeing this mist kind of roll in across the ship and everything it was like oh this is actually you know, really creepy, and the idea that not only can they not see to hunt this thing, but that he now has the complete advantage. And there were moments of like, I don't know how anybody escapes this, and, and maybe nobody does. And, uh, you know, I'll let you see the film to see how all that plays out, but it does wrap up in a way. I'm talking around this because I don't want to reveal how this movie ends, because it it both ends how you expect it to, but also does a little bit of a of a move on its own to distinguish it from the book Dracula. And so I want you to see it and I want you to be surprised by it or at least not spoiled for it. But yes, it definitely... And one of my questions all through this movie was, how does this thing pretend to be a person? And there is a moment where you get to see how that happens. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I thought the end of this movie is quite good. Uh, it, it resolves itself in a way that I found very, very satisfying. And yeah, and, and so Last Voyage of the Demeter is great. It's a, it's a really good, like it's, it's, you know, we talked about No One Will Save You, which feels very Indian art house in comparison to something like this. This feels very big budget mainstream kind of horror. Which is fine. That's what this movie is, and it's what it ought to be. It, it feels like Andre Overdahl was given a task of make a you know an alien with a Dracula on a ship in the 1800s, and he pulled that off. And it's good. Like it's not as good as an Alien, perhaps. I, I don't think it reaches those heights because Alien is just one of the you know great sci-fi horror movies of all time. This is really good and entertaining, though, and it's got a good budget, and the CGI, when it happens, is not terrible, and there's some practical work in there as well to make it more tolerable uh, as well. Like, it, it's good. This is a really, really solid horror movie, and for a big-budget horror film that isn't like an A24, you know, like, talk-to-me kind of horror movie... This is a great studio horror picture. And I wish it was the kind of stuff they were doing more of. Like, if this had been a Dark Universe movie, where they were like, hey, we're going to do this origin story of Drackler, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do him coming to London, and, and the you know, the team of vampire hunters that come after him and so forth. Like, what a great series that would have been, as opposed to trying to turn them all into big-budget action films. Whereas this is, you know, I assume fairly big budget uh, because it looks fantastic and all the stuff on the ship looks great. Um, that it's, you know, the budget is good enough to sell all of that. But it's a really satisfying horror movie, you know. And it's mainstream enough that you're not going to 
you're not alienating the people that are going to really go nuts for something like No One Will Save You, which has this weird left turn in the third act that could either put people off or make people love it in either way. You know, it's not it's not meant for everybody. Whereas this is a movie that is totally meant for everybody, and I think it mostly sells that. So, Last Voyage of the Demeter, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, sit yourself down, pop some popcorn, turn out the lights, cuddle up with a loved one on the couch, throw a blanket over you, and uh, and, and you're going to have a great time. It's a, a really solid horror film in that respect. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so that'll do it for this edition of the 31 Days of Halloween. Um, tomorrow we're going to jump into another series of movies. Uh, there's a trilogy that we are going to do. I'm not going to say more than that yet. I'll talk to you more about that tomorrow. And, uh, and that's it. I hope you have a great second week of Halloween. Now that we're getting into the second week of the season, I hope you're enjoying the shows as they come. I'm certainly enjoying doing them. Uh, you know, life and circumstance have made it difficult for me to do the regular show. Uh, like I would like to. And so doing all this stuff is really exciting and fun for me. And I really love it. Thanks for listening. Uh, Check out Last Voyage of the Demeter. And until October 9th, when we begin a whole new series of movies, uh, keep it spooky out there. And I will see you tomorrow for another film in the 31 days of Halloween. Goodbye until then. (laughs) 